Hey everyone, welcome back to Wise Guys Garage. In today's video, we're going to be upgrading the cooling system in my 91 MR2. Now, I did actually get this guy back on the road. It is fully functional and everything, but I did have huge problems bleeding the cooling system, which is inherently a common issue with these cars. So what I'm going to be doing is upgrading it to a uh, self-bleeding cooling system. And what that I will entail is basically any little excess trapped bubbles that are left in the cooling system as the car is running and driving, or after we attempt to bleed it, they can all be self-purged out of the system. Now, in order to do that, you need to add a coolant expansion tank. And what that essentially means is it gives the opportunity for the coolant to exit out into the expansion tank, let out all the air with it as well, and then return back into the cooling system as a liquid. So, what's the plan with the actual coolant expansion tank? Let's take a look. So right here, this is a 2008 Toyota RAV4 coolant expansion tank with the 2GR that came with it from the factory. And then it just has the pressurized cap that you can see right here. And then this is the bleed port as you can see as well. And then this guy is, if this thing boils over, that's what that little vent thing's there for. This is just some bracket I found laying around in my garage that has a thread on it already. And I just bolted it to this guy. And it's actually nice and secure. Now, originally, as you can see here, I was going to do it where it's coming out of the bleed port right here. But after doing the research on the Toyota RAV4 cooling system, there's actually two vent ports that are on the radiator from the factory. One on the inlet side and then one on the outlet side. Now the inlet side on the radiator is going to be your hot side. The outlet's obviously going to be after it's cooled off. The outlet on this is going to be post thermostat, which is located right down here. So what I essentially going to be doing is adding a bleeder port like this one. So this right here is going to be replacing the thermostat neck that is in the engine bay now. Now, the purpose of this guy right here is just so the coolant has a way to get back into the system after all the air has been removed from it. Now this is gonna be installed right there. And it's gonna be replacing that one that's currently on the engine. I just had this guy laying around in my garage and I figured, you know, why not weld a step to it and then add the little uh, port so the coolant can get back into it. Now, if you look at the RAV4 diagram, this guy is gonna be the other side port for the cooling system. Because you have this one right here on the factory MR2 radiator, and then you have the RAV4 would have one on the other side as well. And essentially, we're just gonna be doing this on the other side of the coolant hose, which is right here. All right, so you're probably asking yourself, why do I keep referencing the Toyota RAV4? Well, that is because from all the factory 2GR FE applications that are out there, that is the only one that I am at least aware of that had a coolant expansion tank. Now, most of them have the tanks where it's like a normal like pressurized cap on the top of the radiator. And there's a little small T that comes off the radiator cap and they have it go into like an overflow tank that isn't pressurized. That is only if they need to add more coolant into the cooling system, it'll just suck it right in. Or if it boils over after like a certain temperature, the uh, cooling system will be able to uh, let out that extra coolant out of the system into that, you know, overflow tank. That is why it's called the overflow tank. Since this is a 2GR FE and the MR2 was never really designed for a coolant expansion tank, they really utilized a overflow tank in the factory. I said, you know what? Why not try to utilize the factory system that Toyota decided to do on the Toyota RAV4 with this exact engine? Cool. So I hope as I'm saying all this stuff, you guys are understanding and it's starting to make a lot more sense. Now we got all that stuff set up, let me show you exactly how this is gonna work. So you can see this guy is the silicone tube that I just grabbed off eBay or whatever. It just is on the valve that you would usually open for the bleeder uh, all the time right now with this guy. And essentially what this is doing is going back to the coolant tank, which is located on the back side of the engine all the way back here and then it goes and feeds into this guy here, right? So keep that in mind when I say the coolant tank or the expansion tank, that's this one. Now, the other hose is going to be this guy. The, remember the radiator sits about right here for the MR2 guys, you know what I'm talking about. This is just the AC condenser here, just disregard that at this point. The other hose is gonna be sitting right about here on the bleeder that goes onto the radiator, and that's the one I was showing you guys earlier which is right over here, if that makes sense, right? 
So I have NPT thrift fittings that I'm just gonna spin on here, put a little 90 degree fitting on that guy, and then just come straight out with the barb fitting right across. So then I can just hook the silicone hose up to that thing right there, and then this should be all set and ready to go. And that fitting is gonna look something like this. And as you saw earlier, this guy is pretty much all set up for the heater core whenever I do decide to get that hooked up. Just unfortunately, I don't have the hoses, you know, put in there just, just yet because the underneath hoses, I wanna get rid of the brass ones and just run the aluminum one that I got on there now. And I'll show you all in a little bit what I plan on doing with that. So typically the factory setup is actually two brass hoses. You can see right where they go, right there underneath. What I plan on doing is adding a little barb fitting onto this guy, you can see right here. I plan on putting, give or take, about right here. It's gonna be right underneath the master cylinder for the brake lines and stuff. And this is essentially gonna eliminate the return from the heater core. And I will just have the one hose underneath the car as the feed. And that'll make it a lot cleaner, simpler, and maybe sort of kind of have some weight reduction. Who knows? All right, so you can kind of see the silicone hose located right here. This is the one that leads up to the radiator right up top, right where my finger ends. And I got it guided along the AC line for now. The AC line would go back up into the frunk, but the silicone hose right here, which is for the bleeder, is gonna lead all the way back up to here, around that part, and then right into this T, which I got right there. Now the second T, this is the one that goes to the heater core. And this hose line right here is the one that's gonna feed the heater core. And since my car doesn't have a cable throttle body anymore, I just went ahead and used all the clips that were for the throttle body originally, and I just put the hose into that piece instead. Looks nice and neat, and if I didn't tell you it wasn't factory, you would probably never know. All right, moving right along. I found this piece of pipe just scrap sitting in my shed on the side of the house, and I just drilled a hole right here into the overhead tube, just so I don't have to add an extra T or splitter in there. I'm gonna TIG weld this onto this piece, and then this is where the other hose from the top of the crossover tube in the engine bay, which is this guy right here. This hose is gonna attach to that, like that over there. So now I'm gonna get you guys set up on a tripod and I'm gonna start welding this real quick. It's all welded up. I went ahead and installed it in the car. So you can see the pipe right there. It just goes all along the firewall. Uh, that's that little bolt bracket that's holding it in place. And then underneath, you can see I welded in a little T right there. And it goes down to the hose. You can see the hose clamp leads up against the firewall. Comes out into this fitting right here. And that's going to go to the top half of the expansion tank. I attempted to make a little gasket for the fans to make it, you know, seal a little bit better. We'll see if that helps, probably not. Temp is all good as it sits right now. So far, we don't have any leaks whatsoever. We'll check right here, real quick. Nope, no leaks. We're just gonna do one of them. This guy, no leaks. Feels good. Underneath the car. That's a seat condensation, whatever. So that's good. 
keeping an eye on the coolant level. It seems to be we're right there, smack dab in the middle. Don't have any leaks right there. And right there. None right at the little joint that we added on the bottom right there. And none right up top right here. So far, so good. The cooling system seems to be bleeding by itself. No issues whatsoever. All right. So, after successfully bleeding the cooling system, it seems to be sticking nice and cool right on the highway. Zero issues whatsoever. Right now, we're just cruising right around 70 miles an hour. And I'm not having any heat issues whatsoever in the MR2. I did have to crack that bleeder a little bit, but after doing so, it seemed to work fantastic. guys so we're back from our trip around the block i got on the thing a bunch of times didn't seem to get hot at all whatsoever which is always a plus the car seems to be running really really good uh temp gauge didn't move exactly what i would love to see i don't have any coolant leaks another thing i would love to see so i think we should be pretty much be all set and that's going to end it for this week's video as well so if you happen to learn anything make sure you leave a thumbs up or if you're going to be doing this to your car as well you can always leave a comment down below and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and I hope to see you in next week's video. Take care.